Good morning, everyone. I'm Coach Spivey, and we're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. And in this review, we're going to be doing a classification review over the material that you've covered this past week. So what is and why is taxonomy important? Taxonomy is the science of defining and naming groups of biological organisms on the basis of shared characteristics. So taxonomy is important for two reasons. First, scientists have a common language to name organisms, and they base this language off of Latin. Latin is a dead language and is no longer changing or evolving. So it doesn't matter what part of the world a scientist is in or what language they speak, they can all use Latin to name and identify organisms. And then second, it shows the connection between certain organisms based on their similar and physical characteristics. So right here we have a taxonomy chart which groups organisms from least in common, which is going to be our domain at the top, all the way down to the most in common, which is species. So we start off with domain, we move down to kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And one way we can remember this is we can ask the question, did King Philip come over for grape soda? So if you notice, we have did D K L P C O F G S. So did King Philip come over for grape soda? And this is a great mnemonic to help us remember all the way starting at the beginning from our domain all the way down to our species. So now let's do our first check for understanding. You're going to put the taxons in the proper order and I give you one minute to do so and you can pause the video beginning now. So now let's take a look at our first check for understanding and you have to excuse my handwriting down at the bottom. We start off first with domain, then to kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. If you remember that mnemonic, did King Philip come over for grape soda, then you probably did very well on this. So now let's take a look at our big three domains. We have archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. So what's the big difference? Eukarya or eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles, or they have a membrane-bound nucleus. So membrane-bound nucleus. And bacteria and archaea do not have nucleus. So no membrane-bound nucleus. And this is the largest difference between bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota. And then let's take a look at the differences between plants and animals. We notice plants make their own food and animals have to eat in order to get their energy. Most of plants are most often green. Of course, animals can be a wide variety of colors. Plants are largely stationary. That means they don't really move. Most plants don't move. Animals or other organisms are actually moved from place to place at some point in time in their life. And then plants reproduce by seeds or spores. Animals reproduce by having babies. Now what they do have in common, they're both living things. They both need oxygen, water, and nutrients in order to survive. So who is Carl Linnaeus? Carl Linnaeus is invented binomial nomenclature, which is a system for naming organisms with a two-part name. The two-part name consists of a genus and species. For example, we are Homo sapien, whereas in Homo is the genus and sapien is the species. Homo sapien and Homo superior have the same genus in common, but they do not have the same species in common. So if you take a look at the names, we both have Homo, which is our genus, but if you look at the species, our species are different. And this is important because only organisms from the same species can produce fertile offspring or offspring that are able to produce other offspring. Now let's take a look at our second check for understanding. And you're going to use the following taxonomy naming chart to answer the questions below. I give you two minutes to do so, and you can pause the video beginning now. So now let's see how you did on your second check for understanding. Number one, what taxon do all of these organisms have in common? All of them have kingdom in common. If you notice, if you go across from the human, walrus, bald eagle to the honeybee, all of them have kingdom in common. 
Number two, which taxon includes the most different types of organisms? And once again, that would be kingdom. Why? Because at the very top of a taxonomy chart, it includes the most different types of animals. So you have the domain and you have the kingdom. As you go down, they become very specific. Number three, which taxon includes the most similar types of organisms? So like I just said, as you go down the taxonomy chart, when you get down to species, these organisms are the very most specific and they have very similar traits in common. Number four, what is the scientific name for each of these organisms? And if you notice, the scientific names for human is Homo sapien, for walrus is Odobinus rosmarus, for bald eagle is Heliatus leucocephalus, and then for honeybee is Apis mellifera. Notice we use the genus and the species, so Homo sapien. And if you notice, as we go across, we use the genus and the species for each one of these. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this science tutorial video was helpful for you, and I hope you get I hope it gets you prepared for whatever assessment you need to take. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Chiva Spivey signing off with Jordan Spivey. Peace, and y'all have a wonderful day.